Mother, Claire Page, this week lost her case as she attempted to make a sex education charity publish a lesson that it taught her daughter. Claire's 15-year-old daughter returned confused from a lesson in September 2021, saying she'd been told to be sex positive and that heteronormative society was a bad thing. A first-tier tribunal has now ruled that the School of Sexuality Education can keep details of the lesson private due to rules relating to confidentiality and the charity's commercial interests. Claire has been instructed, uh, she's instructed her lawyers to appeal and hopes to take the case to an upper-tier informational tribunal. Here to discuss this, I'm delighted to welcome the director of the Family Education Trust, Peter Williams. Peter, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Great to be with you. This is a, this is a complicated one. Let's, mm-hmm. let's give um, our viewers a bit of a synopsis. So Claire's daughter mm-hmm. returned to her from school after having been taught some quite sketchy content in yeah. the classroom. And Claire was upset about this, tried to find out what the lesson content was. The school was guarded mm-hmm. because they're using a third-party external resource. Mm-hmm. And what happened after that? Well, she makes an FYI request. Right. Uh, this is denied by the school on the basis that this is from a third-party organisation. Um, this then goes to a tribunal, and a judge has decided that actually, no, the commercial interests of this organisation trump the right of a parent to actually see this material that's been exposed to her child. So actually, we've had the school see it, we've had an information commissioner see it, we've had a judge see it, but we actually haven't had the parents see it, which should be scandalous. It is scandalous because they're saying the commercial interests of the third party company trump the child's welfare. Exactly. And by commercial inter- interests here, we mean that they're afraid uh, that someone might copy their resources and yeah. there's a copyright claim there. Mm. But surely if that's the case, schools shouldn't be able to teach that content. Surely the priority should be for parents to know what their child is being taught. Exactly. Well, what we're seeing is a prioritisation of what I can only describe as a sex education industrial complex of not only these third-party organisations and their commercial interests, but also the educational establishment and the political establishment Mm -hmm. over this kind of ideology that is now being fed as a part of institutional capture throughout the system from schools right up to the DfE, the Department for Education, and then also the indoctrination of children that is coming as a result of that. What got me so riled up about this one, Peter, is that the judge acknowledged that the content was controversial and it was teaching practices and ideas that are worthy of public scrutiny, Mm. but still ruled against Claire. Exactly. Well, if we're going to have RSE, and what often happens with this is that people can have their children taken out of the S bit, the sex bit, but the R and the the health bit as well, RSHE, that is the means by which these activists actually get their ideology in. So if we're going to have this, then there should be total transparency. The family is the foundational and natural use of society. It has a deserving of the protection from society and the state. Mm -hmm. And not only that... If, that's, if that is the case, then there has to be transparency and parents have to be the primary educators of their children. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have that transparency, that can't function. Instead, children are subject to the interests of activists rather than the parents themselves. Absolutely. I would say that children belong to God, but other than that, they belong mm-hmm. to their parents, Absolutely. not to the state and not to the school. That's right. That's bonkers to me. But this RSE curriculum that you just mentioned was brought in by the so-called Conservative government. Mm-hmm. And you're quite right that the sex elements are still optional. Yeah. Parents can take their children out, but the relationship part is obligatory. That's right. However, the way it's taught is that these are interchangeable and actually schools are struggling because teachers are not trained in how to teach sex education or, or relationship education. No. So they're recruiting these outside resources whether they are people coming into schools or literal resources that they're teaching, mm. and they are what have been infiltrated. So even if schools don't have activist teachers, they're bringing in activism uh, through the back door. That's right. And that's utterly unacceptable. There has to be a prioritisation of the rights of parents as ordinary citizens who are being part, a part of the educational system and their children are part of the system. There has to be reprioritization and centralisation on them and their rights as primary educators of their children, not these activists, not the educational establishment who think they know better. I want to bring my panel in in a minute, but I just want to note that the rule that the judge ruled that some of the materials were not suitable for children. That's a mm. quotation there. Mm. And also that it was intro activist. Yeah. So I'm struggling to get my head around the idea that a judge has looked at all this content and said, actually, we shouldn't be teaching this to kids. But at the same time, I said, parents are not allowed to look at it. How do we move past this? Where do we go? How do parents reclaim their rights? Well, I, I think there has to be a decision. Firstly, there has to be a recapture of the system. I think I would encourage as many people to become governors of schools because actually governors have a lot of power over these kind of areas. I think that's really hugely important. But at the same time, there has to be some kind of political reform to make sure the parents have a statutory right 
to this kind of, uh, to, to certainly some, some transparency. Also, I don't think RSE should be at all compulsory. I think it should be entirely something which is optional for parents. And then again, it should still be a matter of negotiation between parents, the schools, anyone else they want to involve. I would agree. I would say this is stuff that parents should be teaching their children, mm. not schools. I'm going to come to my panel now. Uh, Emma Webb, some of the uh, lesson titles that I've looked at online from this resource centre say, well, they're called Orgasm O'Clock, Babe's Guide to Sex Toys, Erotica and Pornography, Magic Wands, Fun for All the Family. Queer sex, the problem with heteronormativity. Now, would you want your children to be taught this stuff? No, and that was not something that I ever wanted to hear you say, Calvin. <laughs> Read those out. Indeed. Um, I think it's pretty horrifying. I would immediately pull my child out of the school just simply because I don't think if you can't trust them with this, making the decision to use that third-party provider, then you can't trust them full stop. Um, I think fundamentally that... what you. So two things. Firstly, you mentioned in this judge's ruling, um, it's very clear that this contradicts the government's advice around um, indoctrination mm. in schools and highly politicised, contested ideas being taught in schools. So that's one thing, and that's part of the case that's going to this higher court. Um, the second thing is that if the, if the, the, um, the court is ruling that the commercial interests of the company are more important than the public interest. Given that the, the education secretary actually wrote to schools, I think it was in March this year, saying that all materials should be made available to teachers, there should be a straightforward ban on using any third party providers that cannot disclose that material because of their commercial interests. Yeah. Those are not organisations that are fit for operating in schools if they can't share that material. Mm. And frankly, I think it's a bit suspect if there's any um, organisation working in a school that wouldn't want to be completely transparent with mm. parents and accountable. Of course it, it is. It would at least, by the way, be possible to put it up on the school website or some means by, by which that would happen, an intranet or some description, rather than just put it out into the public realm. Mm. That way the parents could see it and it wouldn't be a problem commercially. So there should be some means. Aaron, what's your take on this? Well, some points of agreement and disagreement. I think, first of all, I think RSE is good, personally. I think it's good to teach young people that not everybody is like you, not everybody thinks like you. You live in a society where people disagree and we need to teach children to mediate those differences properly. But then on the specifics of this, I think the IP, the intellectual property arguments, is just so strange. You would think they're talking about, you know, a nuclear fusion reactor. <laughs> they say if the blueprints are available, people could copy them and it would be a big commercial downside for us. I don't quite buy that for this. But this, from the, from the, um, the judgment, was just remarkable. The Commissioner recognised that in this area, parents have rights to decide what is or is not taught to their children, as you've been saying. He notes that those rights cannot be exercised in a meaningful way without parents being aware of the subject matter their children are likely to be taught. So I don't understand how you can say that mm. and then come to this conclusion. And finally, look, I don't think it should be like a left-right thing. You have a private enterprise going into a public school, being funded through taxpayer money, and they're saying, we will not disclose the materials to the parents. This is taxpayer money. Yeah. And when it comes to taxpayer money... Everybody, everybody out there, whether they vote Liberal, Tory uh, or Labour, thinks that you should have a certain measure of scrutiny with that. Mm -hmm. So, look, if you want to make money and have a business by teaching kids in schools funded by taxpayers, you clearly have to disclose the materials you're teaching. Seems quite obvious to me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all very much. <laughs>